Hello and welcome to the second E Premier League Invitational. I'm Adam Smith and I'm pleased to say I will be alongside Joe Tomlinson as we look to find out who is the ultimate FIFA 20 player in the Premier League. We're at the quarter final stage, about to go into game two. And Joe, if people are just joining us, they've missed the game of the tournament so far earlier on today. Yeah, unbelievable matchup. We'll talk about that in just a second and show you the goals as well. But a quick reminder, of course, for everybody watching this, please do stay home and help save lives. And that the prize fund from this EPL Invitational is being donated to the Players Together initiative. Right, let's have a look at the game you're about to see first and foremost, because it's going to be a good one. It's Burnley against Aston Villa. Dark horse for the competition. Charlie Taylor coming up against Keenan Davis, who breezed past Jose Enrique in his first round. We can see the draw in full here. Like I said, Keenan Davis hammered Jose Enrique 6-1. Charlie Taylor, slightly more difficult route to this stage, beating Phil Foden 4-3. But for either of these sides, they will have to face up against James Madison and Leicester in the semi-finals. So I cannot wait for this game, Smithy. What just explain for us, though? Yeah, these are the all-important rules you need to be aware of. The EPL Invitational is a straight knockout tournament. You lose one game and you are out. It is as simple as that. Every round consists of just one game. Every Premier League club is represented either by a player from their squad, an ex-pro or a celebrity fan. But we have no more ex-pros or celebrity fans left in the tournament. Now onto the all-important in-game rules. Two six-minute halves in the event of a draw. Golden goal will be used to determine the winner, just like we saw in our last game. James Madison scoring with James Madison to come through that one. And importantly, 85 rated Premier League kickoff squads, Premier League squads in kickoff mode to establish who is the ultimate FIFA 20 player. Yes, yeah, Smithy. I mean, let's have a look at that game you were talking about, the golden goal thriller between James Madison and Michael Obafemi. Michael Obafemi actually went 2-0 in front after James Madison pre-game had said, you better watch yourself. We don't want a repeat of the 9-0 scoreline that happened in real life. And look at the scenes from Michael Obafemi shushing James Madison early doors. But then it was all Leicester. Madison's got the first back on the stroke of half time and in the second half totally dominated. Got the game back level through Jamie Vardy for Kalechi Ihanacho turned and scored in the 70th minute to put him in front. It wasn't over there though. Michael Obafemi went out the other end and smashed home just three minutes later, taking us to golden goal in which James Madison produced with James Madison, leaving Michael Obafemi to hold his head in his hands. He was absolutely raging, Smithy. I think that's an understatement, Joe Rage. And he was devastated. He, he walked off from his sofa, had his head in his hands. We saw him shush James Madison earlier. James Madison said that he was living in his head rent-free. The battle, the war of the words was, was just absolutely brilliant. But I think on the balance of play, James Madison, worthy winner. And of course, Joe, he is the first player confirmed to join us for finals day tomorrow, which is, of course, the two semis and then the final. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. Uh, between Madison and either Charlie Taylor or Keenan Davis. I know the commentary team are talking Keenan Davis is a potential favourite for the tournament, weren't they? So I'm really excited to see what he'll do against Madison if he progresses. But there's a big game first and foremost. He's got to get past Charlie Taylor. And we know how good Charlie Taylor has been over the last few days, Smithy. Yeah, and speaking of Charlie Taylor, very pleased to say that he joins us now. Representing Burnley, of course, Charlie, uh, there you are, looking very relaxed at the tournament. Uh, before we talk about this let's just assess your tournament so far you played two games of course because you had to come through the round one qualifier won both games narrowly by just one goal yeah i've uh, had two tough games and um, I, was, I think uh, i was on the dog in both but i've got through it and uh, yeah we're getting to the business end of the tournament now we are getting to the business end. What would it mean for you to make uh, the semi-final? Because you have uh, the, the rare opportunity to be the only club that can make it through to the last day on two occasions. So the four semi-finalists in EPL Invitational 1 was Man City, was Liverpool, was Wolves and Burnley. And it's only Burnley left in this tournament. So for all the Burnley fans watching, a uh, very exciting time. What would it mean to you to get to the semi-final and to our final day tomorrow? Uh, yeah, obviously it's been uh, good fun. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Dwight did well last tournament, so uh, yeah, I've got a bit of pressure on myself to uh, try and get to the semis as uh, like he did. Now we saw a very animated two players in our game today, up off the sofa, shushing, talking about living in players' head rent-free. Um, are you going to be similar today? Are we going to see you 
celebrating if you score? And do you have a message to your opponent going into it? Uh, no, I'm probably staying quite chilled out. Um, uh, but yeah, um, just good luck uh, and just hope for a good game. Okay, there we go. The thoughts of Charlie Taylor. Joe, he's been so relaxed throughout this whole tournament. He looks very chilled going into the quarterfinal as well. Yes, very chilled indeed. And we can speak to his opponent, Keenan Davis. Now, Keenan, you had an amazing result in the first round. Absolutely hammered Jose Enrique. Are you going to be dishing out similar punishment here? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. That's the plan. Just try to do the, and you do the same. You also scored five goals with midfielders in the last game. A hat-trick from John McGinn. Is that a style move? Do you like to get your midfielders involved going forward? Yeah, because I've got myself up front. So just hold up the ball and then feed the other players. That's the game plan, really. Yeah, of course, you scored with yourself as well in that first game. Are we going to expect to see you scoring in this game too? Are you backing yourself all the way? Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try. There we go then, Smithy. Can't wait for this one. Really, really looking forward to it. Yes, those are the thoughts of Charlie and Keenan going into our second quarter final matchups. Let's bring in our cast who's been with us all week, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Now, Brandon, we saw two very animated players last time. I think something tells me these two are a little bit more chilled out, a little bit more focused. I don't think we're going to get the uh, the war of words we saw last time, but still a thoroughly entertaining quarter final on the cards. To be, to be honest, I think Charlie Taylor's played this really smart as well. He's not bigged himself up once throughout this tournament. And what we've seen, and Richard will allude to a little bit more, is he's been really consistent with his performances. He's defended well. When he goes forward, he scores goals. He's kind of like an all-round FIFA player. Like He's good defending. He's good with possession. He's good at going forward and scoring goals. So I think he's certainly an underdog that not many people have talked about. And if you remember in the last EP Invitational, Burnley made a semi-final. So Burnley on the sticks aren't actually too bad. On the other side of that, the Keenan Davies. He scored with himself against Jose Enrique, a player that's got quite a calibre, uh, you should say, when it comes to playing FIFA. He had trophies next to him. That didn't matter for Davies, and he picked up the win against him. So I'm really excited to see which way this game's going to go. Yeah, Richard, as I, as I mentioned earlier, Burnley have the opportunity to be the only team to make it through to finals day twice. Um, how do you see this particular game going? Though? Who do you put as favourite? Because as we saw earlier, Charlie looked out Phil Foden, who, who's a very competitive FIFA player. But then on the other side of it, Keenan Davis beating Jose Enrique, who'd won previous FIFA events 6-1. So who do you think, see as favourite for this one? I think... Just with how Keenan Davis played, I'd slightly edge Keenan Davis, but we've got another battle as well. It's the battle of the big men. Keenan Davis seems to be up top, six foot three. Chris Wood for Charlie Taylor. We've got two big boy strikers up top. We have indeed, and we are underway. It is Burnley against Aston Villa for our next quarter final. It's going to be top casters Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. This is the Burnley lineup. In goal today, Nick Pope. Charlie Taylor plays with Matthew Lowton as the wide defenders. All right, we do have uh, a few technical difficulties. So what we're going to do, because we believe that you are hearing the in-game commentary, we will uh, pause that and restart the game. Um, so that will be taking place very short. So please do bear with us. Obviously, everyone is doing this remotely from our living rooms, from the comfort and safety of our living rooms. And we encourage you all to do so, to please stay at home in an attempt to save lives. So, Joe, a few technical difficulties, but we believe will be underway very soon. So I was just asking Richard there as who he sees his favourite because both players have done very well going up to this point. Who, who do you see as a favourite for this one? All round, haven't we, so far? And maybe that's unfair. So maybe now this is the stage where we should start to make Charlie Taylor favourite for me because the, the defeat of Phil Foden is, is no mean feat. Phil Foden was talking about winning 25 weekend league games and Charlie Taylor still scored four goals past him. So I think, you know, about time now that we get... Charlie Taylor out in front as a favourite in a game because he can't be underdog every single match. No, and of course, whoever wins this, Joe, has a very tough game. We saw James Madison uh, scoring goals for fun. James Madison, incidentally, is the highest scorer in this competition. Yes, he has conceded goals, but he's very good going forward. Likes to score with his own in-game character as well. So a very tough semi-final for whoever comes through this. 
100%. And, you know, they're two very different styles of FIFA. I think James Madison around the edge of the box. We know how much he loves a drag back. I haven't really seen that from either of these two players so far. Charlie Taylor, a little bit more direct. We talked about him in commentary and we talked about him in punditry saying that, you know, he plays a little bit like Burnley, quite conservative at the back, very, very solid. And then looking to use the big men. Chris Wood has been an absolute bully. Richard was talking about in there pre-game saying how effective he is in 85 rated mode and I'm looking forward to see his link up play with Jay Rodriguez yet again. Yeah let's just elaborate on that Joe it's a good point we saw Chris Wood um, used to great effect by Dwight McNeil when he got to the semi-final in EPL Invitational 1. Um, Chris Wood being used to great effect again because of the 85 mode uh, as I said again once again Chris Wood has been a very effective in-game player for both Dwight McNeil and for Charlie Taylor. Yeah, definitely. Of course, 85 rated mode brings everybody across the board to the same level, doesn't it? So it gives Chris Wood 91 pace, which makes him extremely, extremely effective against any defender. And Burnley are stacked with big men. Even in the midfield, you look at Jack Cork. You know, he's a large character. And when you even the board out statistically, physicality often plays a big role. And at the back, even more so, Ben Mee, a massive guy alongside the likes of James Tarkovsky, makes it really hard to break him down. Richard yesterday called him... Uh, the great wall of me in commentary. <laughs> and I totally agree. He's been impenetrable so far, Smithy. Yeah, I don't know if he was referring to himself, the great wall of me, or Ben Me. Uh, I need to clear that up with uh, Richard Butley. But I believe we are almost moments away. As I say, this is uh, day four. All games today are the quarterfinal games, and this is game two. So we know that James Madison has won our first quarterfinal. So James Madison is the first player to advance to our finals day tomorrow, which will consist of two semifinals and a final. And the winner of this match will play James Madison. Um, just waiting for the game to commence, Joe. So while we do, let's look ahead at the other games that we've got coming coming our way today because uh, two other very big quarterfinals and the other side of the draw is quite tough to call isn't it I think Max Aaron's had a great performance yesterday so he looks like a really tough player to beat on the other side of the draw yeah, Max Ahrens is definitely, definitely going to be a contender for this. We were talking about Max Ahrens being a contender before the tournament even started. And my mind hasn't been changed after that 4-1 demolition of Ryan Sessegnon, who knocked him, knocked the favourite out himself. But Emerson showed something, I thought, against Andre Gray. He showed a really interesting, quite unique style of play that involved lots of skills. No other player in the tournament has played like that so far. And then let's not write out <clears throat> the two Irish contenders either. You know, John Egan was scoring goals for fun against Jofra Archer. And of course, Brighton, who are represented by Aaron Connolly, knocked out the reigning champions Wolves. So the other side of the draw features some brilliant, brilliant FIFA players. And this side of the match, none more so than the game we're about to witness. I'm just I'm buzzing as well, Smiths. Yeah, I'm buzzing, you're buzzing, and I'm pleased to say that we are almost ready to go. Yes, we are. Burnley against Aston Villa, our second quarter final on day four of the EPL Invitational. Let's hand you back to our casters, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Adam and Joan. Yeah, we're underway for our second quarter final of the day, day number four of the EPL Invitational. Whoever wins this will book a semi final date up against Leicester City and James Madison, Richard. And I think everyone that's been watching this tournament throughout will be praying that we get a quarter-final like we just had. Oh, absolutely, Brandon. I also am very intrigued because both of these two players not really involved with the mental sort of warfare. Will James Madison be able to break either of these two down? Will he be able to get into their head? Because the two previous opponents that he's had, both in Southampton and Bournemouth, He's probably edged that battle. So that's another captivating area of the semi-finals coming up. But we need to find who will be meeting James Madison in that semi-final. Will it be Villa or will it be Burnley? We mentioned him a number of times, Richard. The great wall of me is still there at the back and involved in defending once again. That could have been a chance for Aston Villa. Still is going to be in possession for Aston Villa now. The build up play John McGinn, who scored a hat trick, believe it or not, in the last game out we saw against Jose Enrique. Keenan Davies actually got on the score sheet himself in that game. Remember, we are playing, as we said, 85 rated mode. So, whether you're a 64 rated item on FIFA Ultimate Team or on usual kickoff mode, in this mode, everyone is 85 rated. So, you can really start to create some of those incredible stories like we saw with Michael Ebefemi when he used his own player in the game. We saw James Madison score a golden goal winner just half an hour ago. 
An early Keep shake of the head the there ball. from Charlie Taylor. It's me there again. He's under pressure. There he is. Come on. From Keenan Davis. Picking up where he left off against Jose Enrique. Keenan, have you been playing much FIFA in between your games? Nah, I've been taking a break. What's it like playing with yourself as well in FIFA? Because technically this is the best version of yourself that you've ever used. Yeah, it's much different. Charlie Taylor, eh? what that. a unrecognisable position, Brandon. Trailing in a game. When you look at his results, Richard, he's taken out some huge names in this tournament. Beating Arsenal in round one, which he had to play to get into the oh, round no. of six. I'm not too sure what's happening at the bat there. Get rid of it. Keep it, get back in your goal as well. And then he went and beat Manchester City four goals to three. So he had a 2-1 win and a four goals to three win. We're not seeing anything different in terms of Charlie Taylor conceding goals. He does concede goals and he hasn't had massive score lines. It's just a case of he wins by a goal or so. So I wouldn't write him off just as of yet. Here comes Trezeguet now. Chance for Villa to get a second. It's across the box. And Jack Grealish <laughs> has just made this two goals to nil. And this is the first time in the EPL <laughs> Invitational that wow. Charlie Taylor has been trailing. See a smile on his face. <laughs> has to show something different here in the first 20 minutes. It just looks all a bit too rudimental potentially for Villa and Keenan Davis. I said in his first game against Jose Enrique, Keenan Davis, up to what we'd seen, Brandon, the most well-rounded FIFA player in terms of knowing the game, knowing the basics, fundamental FIFA that we have seen. Well, and said, yeah, you know, he's a player we should be watching out for in this tournament. Definitely a player that could even go the full way. And whoever wins this goes into the semi-final chance for another one. Wow, it could have been if he was just on side there with his own player. Keenan Davies leading by two goals to nil. 24 minutes gone in this game. And Villa back with possession. Charlie Taylor really struggling at the moment. Struggling to build up as he, he did in his previous games as well. The possession that he was holding, building through the thirds. That sort of being eradicated in his first 25 minutes. It's been Keenan Davis just bossing the game. Oh, what a goal. What? This could be three. This could be three. It will be. What a goal. Keenan Davis stealing the words out of my mouth. What a goal. Oh. Incredible stuff. Jack Grealish for the first half brace. Charlie Taylor. Charlie, what's gone wrong? What's gone wrong? to really get going in this game and it's the press that Villa are showing it's the exact same press that he showed against Ooh. Liverpool when he beat him six goals to one that was Jose Enrique three up inside 30 minutes Keenan Davis we're we'll about to say it he's the man to beat struggling with that pass from defence to midfield at the moment that's where a lot of possession has been lost chance to break now for Burnley remember last time out they made a semi-final Dwight McNeil had a fantastic running in the first ever EP invitation this time around they are back in a quarter final but unfortunately they're three goals down the third of this game already played massive switch of play this do lovely little Ronaldo chop around the corner, chance for another one for Villa, cuts back inside, it's John McGinn, scoring goals. And Keenan Davis, McGinn again. 4 nil up. Does John normally score this many goals from FIFA? I swear he normally doesn't. Keenan Davis. What's he like playing with John McGinn in real life, Keenan? Oh, he's a great player. Very good left foot as well. Are you happy this time that you've been able to kind of take the role? Because John didn't have really a tournament to remember last time out, did he? Yeah, exactly. He was the wrong man for the job. I know you spoke a lot about him, Richard, but have they found the right man for the job now in Keenan Davis? Four goals to nil in a quarter final. I mean, just look at the way he's playing. Keeping the ball in the midfield, building up in possession. McGinn driving towards him. That would have been 
an unbelievable goal, keeping possession and then releasing that thunder bolt from John McGinn's left boot. But he just looks very well-rounded in all of the areas of the pitch. Defence, he knows that he's how to jockey, he knows how to sort of hold players up. Midfield, not rushing, keeping the ball, moving left to right. In the attacking third, drag backs. He's looking for the cutback every time. The most effective way of scoring in FIFA. Lovely play from Jack Grealish looking for that finesse shot, but it just looks like the complete package. He also cast your mind back as well, Rich, as that round of 16 game where Aston Villa did knock out Liverpool. Jose Enrique representing Liverpool in that game. What did he do, Richard? He scored all his goals in the first half, really. He took the lead early on, built his goals into it in the second half. I think he was just trying to score with himself, of all honesty. <laughs> And that will do us for half time. I'll tell you what, Aston Villa, we might as well put them in the semi finals right now. Dominant. There we go. It is 4 0 at the halfway mark. Commentator Brandon Smith saying we might as well put them in the semi final now. It's been that one sided. Keenan, you must be delighted with that first half performance. Yeah, it's a great first half. Could not say anything more. And of course, you scored with your, yourself again. You're getting a lot of joy with your own in-game player. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, he's, he's been playing well. Let's speak to Charlie. Charlie, you've had a, a good run. Obviously, this game's still going on. 4 nil down. There's a lot to do in this second half. What went wrong in that first half, mate? <laughs> Just about everything. Um, I don't even want to look at them start. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just shocking from the first minute. Uh, it's getting a bit embarrassing now. I just... Probably got to try and keep it below five. I was going to ask you, they're probably trying to keep it below five. It's probably preempted the next question. We saw a little bit of a comeback uh, in our first game. Are we about to witness one of the greatest comebacks of the tournament? Can you pull this around? Probably got to get a shot on target first, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Very modest from Charlie Taylor. I've probably got to get a shot on target in order to get back into the game. It is 4-0. Second half's underway. Let's head back to our casters, Brandon and Rich. Yeah, well, he's, uh, I think he hit the nail on the head there, Richard. He needs to get a few more shots on target if he wants to get himself back into this game, into the second half now. Aston Villa 4-0 up in this quarter-final. I saw a glimpse of the stats at half-time. I think it were 10 shots, 7 on target for Keenan Davis, for Burnley. I don't know if Charlie registered a shot. Goodmanson playing through Chris Wood. This could be the start of the comeback. Charlie gets a goal. Four goals to one. Goal. So you what, Richard, it was a goal that Burnley needed. Who was it? You hyped him up before the game. Chris Wood, he's been involved in literally everything for the Clarets in the EPL Invitational. Perfect way to start this second half. I also saw in that bottom right corner, team press implemented on by Charlie Taylor. Players going to be flooding forward now in the Claret. McNeil wins it back. Another chance potentially here. Chris Wood going through. Just Ooh. over hit. Pepe Reina comes out and collects. Yeah, slightly too heavy on that pass. If that did go through, I'll tell you what, Richard, what a game we'd have on our hands. Best thing that Keenan Davis can do is just score a goal, put this game to bed. You'll be back in front by four goals to nil. Of course, the score would be 5 1. Here's that chance. Is that the goal? Save needed by Nick Pope. Matthew Target with that one into the box, head of the way by Lowton. Chance here, the potentially. Chance Charlie Taylor himself. He's making that run still on the left bottom corner of your screen, but. Only will come forward. You look for that whip across. Maybe the wrong option went for the pass around the corner instead. Yeah, he didn't really have many options, to be honest. Goodmanson out wide there. He could have cut back, but. It was getting a little bit crowded inside the box. He went for that pass across. Rayner doing very well just to, to smother it. But a much better second half performance here from Charlie Taylor. He's been able to create a lot more, which is what he needs after conceding four goals. Once again, we're seeing the same sort of situation here against Liverpool when Aston Villa played them earlier on in the tournament in the round of 16. We saw Keenan Davis score all his goals really in the first half and show that dominance. 
Second half here, Charlie Taylor has had a few chances. This would be game ah. over if it goes in. And honestly, I think that's done now, Richard, in my opinion. 25 minutes left in it at the back post. A bit of player was there, and a bit of player will get on the score sheet again. Trezeguet with the goal. I think it will be a semi final of Leicester against Aston Villa. Yeah, coming in the back post, Trezeguet always going to be favourite there. Beautiful cross from Keenan Davies. He almost takes his foot off the gas a little bit. He knows that the, the game in his own head is, is pretty much done. It's, it's wrapped up at half time and gives his opponent a little bit of false hope. But Charlie Taylor has had an incredible run in this tournament, Brandon. Kim is a pretty much an unknown quantity. We didn't know really know what to expect from his FIFA ability, but being very impressed with what he has produced. I mean, if you look at the results he's had as well, Rich, just to come through the round one, which is never going to be easy. Trezeguet looking to make it six if he can get round the corner. Ball to the back post. And who else is going to score than himself? He set himself up for a hat-trick. That's <laughs> Eden Davis. Oh, <laughs> getting embarrassing now. Charlie, just a quick one. How good is Keenan Davis? Yeah, Unbelievable. Too. Can't get anywhere near him. He's been really impressive. Every single attack, he looks like he is going to score. Which for some players isn't always the case. As we said, semi final will be in writing. That will be taking place tomorrow. And that will see Leicester's James Madison. He won in golden goal against Southampton. Up against Aston Villas. Keenan Davis. Yeah, Madison Gravis. Hands cut out for him. It's going to be a very, very tough game. Versus Keenan Davies. I could be looking at the eventual winner here, Brandon. Villa. I'm going to put it out there. Could be looking at the winner. I know you've always been a favourite of... What Keenan has showed throughout the tournament so far. If he does win this game by six goals to one, it'll be the exact same result that he got in the round of 16 against Jose Enrique of Liverpool. Unless he wants to add another one to the list. Davies was in there. Just couldn't get his foot around the ball. McGinn and to Trezeguet into the final 10 minutes now. Of course, he will be saying goodbye to Burnley. They will fall slightly early in the competition after making the semi final last time. There's another chance. There's another goal. Everything that it seems that any Aston Villa touches in that <coughs> final third turned into gold. It's another goal at oh, seven on. in total. Well, more driven as well, the near post from El Ghazi from Keenan Davies. Just when I, when I was talking earlier about the the real completionist of the sort of FIFA manual, you've got to say, having the drag backs, having the different shot types that you can do in certain areas the driven pass all these things Keenan Davies is showing and more Brandon nobody else has shown that level of sort of expertise in the tournament is it really dangerous scoring an incredible amount of goals in total 13 in the tournament that's only from round of 16 and this quarter final didn't go in the round one but we'll be adding Burnley to the list of teams that he has knocked out in this tournament. A semi-final awaits him of Leicester City and James Madison. That oh, is no. going to be a game full of goals. Oh, oh Burnley. Oh, Burnley. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. Cha Charlie Taylor conceded four goals in his previous two matches. He's conceded seven in one game eight. here. Through the hands of Keenan Davies. He said eight. It is eight. <laughs> Off the record here. <laughs> I want nine. And you are actually matching up the score that we saw in the round one game between Bournemouth and Leicester. That was an 8 1 scoreline. He wants to get one more. Be the most goals scored in happen. a game that we've seen for one single team. Uh. And there goes the full time whistle. Congratulations, Keenan Davis. You will be in the semi finals. Unfortunately, Charlie Taylor, head in hands. It hasn't been a quarter-final performance to remember.
So Keenan, six goals in your first game, eight goals in your second game. How many are we going to see in your next game? Uh, hopefully nine. Trying to progress oh. each, each game. <laughs> Charlie, that was a very tough game, wasn't it? Keenan's a really good opponent. Yeah, um, very good. Uh, surely he's got to go on and win it from what I've seen today. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, going to be conceding eight goals there, that's just, uh, well, it was embarrassing at half time, it's just got even worse. So, so where do you think uh, the, the match was won and lost? Do you think you just didn't turn up yourself or was Keenan that good? I just think Keenan was that good. Like, I can't compete with that. That's, um, yeah, the, that's just, the standard's far too good for me there. Uh, I'm happy just to make the quarterfinals, to be honest. And Keenan, how enjoyable has it been playing in this tournament? What does it mean to the Villa fans? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a bit of fun as well, and it's good for, for a good cause. So, yeah, it's just all round good. And obviously, you're going to be facing James Madison in the semi finals. So, how much are you looking forward to finals day? Yeah, very excited. I saw his game earlier, he was a good player. So, it should be a good game. Now, James Madison's known for his mind games. Are you going to let him get in your mind? Are you going to be doing any mental preparation <laughs> to try and stop that happening? No, no, I'm just going to focus on myself, focus on the game, hopefully get a win. There we go then. Congratulations to Keen Davis. Commiserations to Charlie Taylor. Thank you very much to both of the players for joining us today. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, Joe, what a game that was. I think we spoke earlier, all four of us, myself, you, Brandon and Richard, and we're trying to work out who was the favourite there and sort of making out it's going to be quite a close game due to the fact that Charlie had come through two tough opponents, including Phil Foden. But 8-1, I don't think any of us saw that coming. Keenan Davis scoring goals for fun in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think actually pre-game I said Charlie that Charlie Taylor might be favourite. What was I talking about? <laughs> Absolutely clueless. Uh, that was one of the most complete displays we've seen this tournament for sure. And James Madison versus Keenan Davis is now going to be a blockbuster, isn't it? Both of those players score goals for fun. We've seen James Madison put eight goals in the net. Now we've seen Keenan Davis put eight goals in the net. I do not know how we're going to separate them. Either way, we have confirmation of the fact that Aston Villa progressed to the semi-finals with an 8-1 victory over Charlie <laughs> Taylor of Burnley. What a performance. And here's what it means for the draw in full. As I just said, Aston Villa progressed to the semi-finals. They'll face off against James Madison. We've still got two more quarter-final matchups coming your way, though. Norwich Chelsea and Sheffield United Brighton. Next up, we're going to see that big game, Sheffield United versus Brighton. It's going to be John Egan versus his Ireland teammate, Aaron Connolly. Yeah, very much looking forward to this. Two Republic of Ireland teammates, John Egan and Aaron Connolly. And I think this one might get a bit spicy as well. I think they're going to have words with each other, try and get in each other's heads. But that is our next quarterfinal coming your way at five o'clock. So just a final reminder from us to you all to please stay at home in an attempt to save lives. We'll see you very soon for our next quarterfinal. Bye-bye.